A Harvard scientist shed light on Pasteur's 175-year-old question. This is a real invention. French chemist Louis Pasteur discovered in 1848 that some molecules essential for life exist in mirror image forms, just like our left and right hands. Today we know that biology has chosen only one of these chiral forms. To put it this way, DNA, RNA, and their building blocks are all right-handed, while amino acids and proteins are all left-handed. Seeing this selectivity or homochirality, Pasteur thought magnetic fields could explain it, but the issue remained one of biology's great mysteries. Some time ago, evidence emerged that Pasteur might have been somewhat right. The owner of the research, which revealed this and put forward the opinion that excited the scientific world, is Furkan Osterk, a 26-year-old Turkish physicist who continues his studies as a doctoral student at Harvard University. In three new papers, the researchers suggest, magnetic minerals common on early Earth deposited on only one side of the surfaces of key biomolecules with mirror images. The continuation of the same form may also have initiated a positive feedback. This discovery is critical to answering some questions about how life began and continues on Earth. However, the question posed by Pasteur was also among the questions that could not be resolved. With these points, the research excites the scientific world. Stunning comment from the Nobel laureate. Nobel Prize winning scientist professor Although Jack Shostak was not part of the research, he was quite excited. This is a real breakthrough, he tells science, saying, homochirality is essential to kickstart biology, and, this research put forth, is a possible, even I think very likely, solution. So what does all this tell us? Chemical reactions are typically neutral and yield equal amounts of right and left-handed molecules. But life requires selectivity, for example, only DNA that is right-handed, that is, DNA that simply bends only to the right, has the right bend to interact properly with other chiral molecules. While Osterk and his colleagues made a discovery about the behavior of the molecules that make up life, Osterk said, the basic molecules that make up life, such as sugars, amino acids, DNA and RNA, can be found in dichotomous helices. However, life somehow prefers to use only one of the couples that have this symmetry, he summarizes and adds. So life actually breaks a symmetry that exists in chemistry. It was not known why this symmetry was broken. President of the Salk Institute for Biological Studies, Professor Gerald Joyce states that to get life you have to break the mirror structure or you won't succeed. Over the last century, researchers have proposed a variety of mechanisms, including cosmic rays and polarized lights, to steer the first biomolecules in one direction, but while both can create aberrations that cause either right-handed or left-handed molecules to turn one way or another, this resulting aberration is likely to be a large part of what was needed in the formation of the first cells. It does not directly explain how it might have grown and accelerated to form reserves of chiral molecules. Physicist Dimitar Sasilov from Harvard University, who is one of the leaders of the research together with Furkan Osterk, uses the expressions an explanation that creates the first orientation is a good start, but it is not enough. The scientific world had taken steps, but researchers led by Ron Nauman, a chemical physicist at the Weizmann Institute of Science, discovered in 1999 that electrons in opposite chiral forms of a molecule have opposite spin patterns, a magnetic property. Nauman and colleagues discovered that left-handed peptides, short chains of amino acids, attach to a magnetic surface while right-handed peptides repel. However, this finding does not explain how the initial orientation grew. It was a research published in 2009 that laid the foundations for the result that emerged today. Researchers led by Matthew Pounder and John Sutherland of the University of Manchester were investigating the possible origins of RNA, which many researchers think is a central player in the origin of life. They were intrigued by a molecule called riboaminoxazoline, RAO, which they discovered could react to form two nucleotide building blocks of RNA. RAO applies a single chirality, and such a crystal is extremely rare. When a crystal with this property begins to grow from right or left-handed versions of the molecule, only molecules with the same chirality can bind to this structure. 
That is, such crystals can result in the formation of chiral RAO if they have existed with an initial bias. Now Furkan Osterk, Silov and their colleagues have put these two pieces together. They wondered if the magnetic surfaces could support a single RAO chiral form. To find it, they turned to magnetite, a magnetic mineral commonly found in the Earth's crust. By applying a strong external magnetic field, they aligned the electron spins in magnetite and strengthened the magnetite's magnetism property. When they exposed the magnetite surface to a solution containing an equal mix of right and left-handed RAO molecules, an initial bias occurred in 60% of the overseers either left-handed or right-handed. This created a crystal seed that caused similar 50 RAOs to bind as well, eventually forming pure, one-handed RAO crystals. A great effect. When they changed the direction of the magnetic field and repeated the experiment, this time reversed crystals formed. Pauner, who opened this door in 2009, interprets the point Furkan Osterk and his friends have reached as, it's a really great effect and a way to break the symmetry. While there have been comments that this was created by creating unrealistic conditions, previous reports indicate that magnetite exposed to Earth's natural magnetic field may tend to form a form of a chiral molecule. Furkan Osterk also discovered the following detail, when pure chiral RAO crystals are placed on top of magnetite, this causes the electron spins in the crystals to align, forcing more and more electrons into it. While conveying that this is positive feedback, Osterk says, it improves itself and increases the permanence of the trend. The adventure that started with Pasteur continues. Furkan Osterk and his colleagues are also aware of this. Sasilov concedes, of course, that RAO leads to the synthesis of two of the four nucleotides of RNA, cytosine and uracil. It is not known to produce the other two, adenine and guanine, but the team also recognizes that it has made significant strides in discovering these reactions.